Have you ever heard of the underwater city of Atlantis or the golden city of El Dorado? If yes, you would be aware that these are ancient cities and civilizations that predate ours by hundreds and thousands of years. But while both El Dorado and Atlantis are yet to be found, archaeologists have discovered and unearthed hundreds of other cities with civilizations that rival ours. And recently, scientists announced that they had found an untouched ancient civilization on top of a mountain in the Amazon jungle, completely shattering our pre-existing understanding of ancient cities. What are ancient civilizations? How did the scientists discover this ancient civilization in the Amazon jungle? And what is the implication of this discovery? Join us in this video as we reveal how scientists just found an untouched civilization on top of a mountain in the Amazon jungle. In decades past, humans were serenaded with stories of superhumans and ancient cities and civilizations. These are the myths and legends upon which a bulk of today's archaeological research is built and anchored. Ancient civilizations are old societies that existed many centuries ago. These civilizations were known for a high level of intelligence and had systems of government and ways of life very different from today. Think of them like really old versions of the countries we have now without all the modern stuff we use. From these societies grew innovations like writing, advancement in farming, art, and science. They also built massive structures like pyramids and temples. They had their languages, religions, and ways of doing things unique to their time and place. Some of the most famous ancient civilizations include the Egyptians with their pharaohs and pyramids, the Greeks known for their philosophers and epic stories, and the Romans, who were exceptional at engineering and building impressive structures. These civilizations are scattered in different countries and continents, and lately scientists have discovered one such civilization in the Amazon jungle. The Amazon jungle is a vast, thick forest in South America, spreading across many countries like Brazil, Peru, Colombia, and others. It is the biggest tropical rainforest on Earth. It is famous for its dense trees and diverse wildlife, with tons of different plants, animals, and tribes living there. The jungle is a bustling home to a vast variety of life forms. However, until the conquistadors arrived from Spain, wiping out many tribes in the process, experts thought the Amazon was largely untouched. The region was only hospitable to small communities of nomadic hunter-gatherers because of the soil's poor quality. But recently, Heiko Prümers at the Deutsches Archäologisches Institut in Berlin and colleagues used light detection and ranging LIDAR technology to reconstruct a vast and complex urban society in the Llanos de Mojos region of the Bolivian Amazon. They found that the Casarabe society built complex and vast structures between AD 500 to 1400. They also discovered that the society decorated their cities in the annually flooded savanna with tall ceremonial structures, moats, and interconnected roads and checkpoints. Researchers say that this lost civilization on the southwestern frontier of the Amazon is of a scale and complexity unlike any other previously discovered in the region, proving that cities did exist in the Amazon. The Casarabe tribe inhabited about 4,500 square kilometers of annually flooded savanna that also had 22 meters of conical pyramids and a five-yard terrace covering roughly the size of 30 soccer fields. They made these monumental structures out of mud brick and connected their cities through 600 miles of canals, raised causeways, and a complex system of reservoirs and lakes to irrigate crops. According to one of the study's co-authors, the scale of the structures is massive and beyond anything seen before. The enormity and labor involved in the construction of the civic and ceremonial structures and water management infrastructure compare favorably to Andean cultures and are to a scale far beyond the sophisticated, interconnected settlements of southern Amazonia. 
In the past, curiosity and rumors had inspired many bold explorers in history to discover lost cities in the Amazon. However, many found no sighting of the legendary city of El Dorado, but instead contracted a deadly disease or simply never returned. Rather than chasing rumors or hunches, researchers now have evidence. Previous surveys of the region suggest that some of the most complex pre-Columbian societies in the Amazon basin developed in modern-day Bolivia. However, the true scale was largely hidden from the human eye and hard to reach in person. LIDAR technology revealed findings beyond the team's expectations. Researchers fired lasers from a helicopter and generated computer models of the lost structures, revealing 26 settlements in new detail and 11 that were previously unknown. The sites had two urban centers, Kodaka and Landivar, that concentrated many of the structures, monumental mounds, and pyramids. These cities branched out to settlements of four tiers, which got smaller the further away they were from the urban hubs. For many researchers, this discovery was beyond expectations and broke the mold of the conceived idea of what the Amazon jungle was like. One of these was Michael Heckenberger, an anthropologist at the University of Florida, who has been waiting for this discovery. Heckenberger posited in a 2003 paper that pre-Columbian Amazonian urban societies had existed based on his archaeological studies of settlements in the upper Singu region in the Brazilian Amazon. We were criticized because they didn't fit the classic model of the city, which requires big monuments, big buildings, and clearly defined centers that are capitals, Heckenberger says. He further said, and here they are, those platform mounds, the step mountains, the U-shaped structures and the scale of individual or singular settlements is certainly in a range that anywhere else on the planet would be described as urbanism. While the study's authors do not know exactly how many people lived in the lost civilization, Heckenberger estimates that its population may have been in the tens of thousands. According to the study's authors, its architecture suggests it was vast, Kodaka was the nucleus of an area spanning 500 square kilometers, which contained 18 other monumental sites, three secondary tier settlements, two second tier centers, and clusters of small fourth tier sites. Experts believe the new Bolivia site is one of the earliest in the Amazon to accommodate people. The community lived on domesticated crops, such as manioc and rice, that they cleared from the forest and they constructed irrigation systems. The people did not just live on the mammals and fish they speared. With these results, researchers suggest a revisit of the history of the Amazon because of these findings and the growing evidence of the last two decades. Our results put to rest arguments that Western Amazonia was sparsely populated in pre-Hispanic times, Robinson says. Advances in technology such as LIDAR have allowed academics to reconstruct several lost civilizations. Also, studies in the state of Mato Grosso and elsewhere in the Brazilian Amazon have revealed that the Amazon was not a pristine carpet of vegetation until modern society colonized the region. Not far away from this discovery is the stretch of the Bolivian Amazon known as the Llanos de Moxos. Here, there is the sultry port of Loma Suarez, which takes its name from a notorious rubber baron who built a mansion and ranch beside a loma or hill overlooking the Ibarre River. During the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Nicolas Suarez and his brothers were among the richest and most ruthless people in Bolivia, ruling over a vast swath of the Amazon basin with terrifying violence. While not so obvious, the hill now topped with a mausoleum for one of the brothers, Romulo, sitting around 10 meters in height, is actually man-made. It is one of the many tens of thousands of earthworks built by remarkable but little-known ancient societies. The Llanos de Moxos, or Mojos, is a classic rebuff of the idea of the Amazon as a pristine wilderness before the arrival of the Europeans. 
spanning 120,000 square kilometers of tropical savanna, rainforest, and snaking waterways in northeast Bolivia, the region roughly the size of England, has been inhabited for 10,000 years. It was initially inhabited by hunter-gatherer communities, but more complex societies started to develop around 1000 BC. In response to the highly challenging environment, which included dramatic seasonal floods, these people built networks of earthwork structures, hills, elevated residential and ceremonial platforms, raised fields to protect against rising water levels, plus causeways, canals, aqueducts, and reservoirs. According to pioneering U.S. archaeologist Kenneth Lee, who first visited the region in the 1950s, there were estimated to be as many as 20,000 earthworks, with the largest villages home to 2,000 people or more. Recent research suggests that for more than 2,000 years, the Llanos de Moxos was home to far more people, perhaps as many as a million, and far more sophisticated societies than previously thought. Despite lacking vital resources such as local sources of stone and domesticated animals, these societies completely reshaped their surroundings, building an array of earthwork structures for homes, agriculture, religious ceremonies, and burial grounds that enabled them to thrive in a landscape that even today can prove highly testing. This construction work involved the mass movement of soils, transformation of local topography, soil enrichment, and change in vegetation composition, according to the University of Pennsylvania archaeologist Clark L. Erickson in his research paper, Amazonia, the historical archaeology of a domesticated landscape. Artificial canals and causeways provided transport and communication links, helping to not only mitigate the damage from seasonal floods, but also actively manage the water levels. Lagoons and weirs were created to aid fishing, while other earthwork formations were designed to drive wild animals onto designated patches of dry land, where they could be more easily hunted. Although many of these structures were abandoned in the 15th century, possibly because of conflict, drought, or famine, and have since been swallowed by the jungle, some are still occupied by indigenous communities. Others, however, have been subsumed into towns and ranches, and a few have been protected through conservation projects. Describing his experience at a nearby nature reserve and eco-lodge on another man made Hill, Shafiq Megji, the author of Crossed Off the Map. Travels in Bolivia recounts seeing amazing structures. A couple of minutes into their boat ride, he saw a narrow channel that sliced through the dense green riverbank. Described as an ancient earthwork, it was a canal built 1,000 years ago or more and lined with reeds and spindly trees. The reserve, named Chuchini, means Den of the Jaguar, which is one of about 100 mammal species present there. There are also more than 300 species of birds. Also, more than 15 artifacts, notably finely worked ceramic pots, urns and figurines produced by the earthwork builders, have been excavated in the reserve, and more are being discovered all the time, including, recently, an adult skeleton. Although archaeological interest in the Llano de Moxos is relatively recent, with the first excavations carried out in the 1910s and the extent of the earthworks only started to become apparent half a century later, the region has long captivated outsiders. In his 1609 book Royal Commentaries of the Incas, the Spanish Inca historian Garcilaso de la Vega wrote about a 15th century Inca expedition into an Amazonian province called Musu, where they found a great many warlike people who, while delighted to be friends and confederates, refused to submit to Inca rule. But in recent decades, studies of the Llanos de Moxos have shifted this view. They demonstrate how these societies sculpted, tamed, and exploited the landscapes around them, creating one of the largest, strangest, and most ecologically rich artificial environments on the planet. Another discovery along this line was made recently by the archaeologist Ivan Spreich, who has spent nearly 30 years uncovering long-lost cities buried deep away from our eyes. In 2013, the Slovenian archaeologist and his team unearthed a previously unknown 40,000-person city, 
dating to the 8th century that had been swallowed by the rainforest called Chaktun. A year later, they located two more Maya cities, Lagunita and Tamchen, which each featured pyramid temples, plazas, and intricately carved stele that seemed to have been mysteriously abandoned around 1,200 years ago. Also, in 2014, Spryche and his team unearthed Lagunita, an ancient Maya city dating to the 8th century. Yet, it is Spryche's latest discovery that is now drawing worldwide attention. The archaeologist and his team recently located the remains of an ancient, abandoned Maya city, home to numerous pyramid-shaped structures rising more than 15 meters. He named the site Okomtun, which is translated as a stone column in Yucatec Mayan, after the many cylindrical columns also scattered throughout the settlement. Pottery examined from the site indicates it was likely inhabited between 600 and 800 CE. According to Spryche, these cities had been lost to time. Nobody knew exactly where they were, but this was actually the last major black hole on the archaeological map of the central Maya lowlands. Nothing was there. There was not a single known site in an area stretching some 3,000 to 4,000 square kilometers. Commonly considered one of the greatest civilizations in the Western Hemisphere, the Maya ruled over much of Central America during their peak between 200 to 900 BCE. Perhaps best known for their towering pyramid temples and more than 40 grand cities carved out of stone, such as Tikal, Huaxactun, and Copan, the Mayans were also obsessive astronomers, brilliant mathematicians, and prolific scribes. They kept detailed records of eclipses and solstices and aligned their city's most important structures to the celestial movements. They invented the concept of zero roughly 1,000 years before Europeans and developed a calendar in the first century BCE that was more accurate than the Julian calendar used across the UK, Europe, and Asia for the next 1,700 to 2,000 years. They were one of the world's earliest civilizations to devise a system of writing as early as 300 BCE and went on to create thousands of paper books. According to Spryche, there has always been a fascination around the Maya. Most of these wonderful cities have been found deep in the forest, so it has kind of been an enigma. How can a civilization emerge and flourish in a tropical environment? But despite more than a century of scholarly investigations into who the Maya were, one central question remains. What happened to their great cities? In the 8th and 9th centuries, the Maya started suddenly abandoning their cities, and these once great Mesoamerican metropolises constructed using highly sophisticated science and engineering techniques mysteriously fell apart. Sprach and others have long pondered whether this was due to warfare, prolonged droughts, soil depletion, climate change, or a combination of factors. But Sprach explained that by roughly 1000 BCE, almost every settlement in the region was abandoned. The rediscovery of any new lost Maya city holds valuable clues about how Maya people lived and what caused the civilization's sudden downfall some 1,200 years ago. In describing their discovery, Spryche said, We knew there was something quite important there, but we couldn't imagine what exactly we'd find. When we got there, our suspicions were confirmed. Architecturally, it was truly massive. So it's clear this must have been a politically important center. Surrounded by extensive wetlands, the city was built on high ground and was comprised of a monumental nucleus covering more than 50 hectares. In addition to pyramids and stone columns, the team found altars, three plazas dominated by crumbling buildings and a court for the Maya's ancient ball game. A sprawling 80 meters acropolis marks the city's northwestern corner and is topped by another pyramid rising 25 meters above the natural terrain. A short walk south, there are two more pyramids standing 15 meters tall. According to Dr. M. Catherine Brown, an anthropology professor at the University of Texas at San Antonio and renowned Maya scholar, this is a very exciting discovery to say the least. Despite more than 150 years of investigations in the Maya world, 
This discovery shows the power of LIDAR to reveal sites of this size, as well as important details about their layout and urban planning. I believe that Ivan's research will shed light on important questions related to the rise and fall of the ancient Maya, as well as their daily life. Despite an estimated 90% of Mayas dying from disease, war, and slavery during the 16th century Spanish conquest, Maya people and culture never disappeared. Today, an estimated 6 to 8 million Maya people speaking 28 Maya languages still live in Guatemala, Belize, Western Honduras, El Salvador, and Southern Mexico. Beyond its sheer size, the real value of Okumtun may lie in what it reveals about when and why Maya communities migrated inland from the coast to settle in the interior and what led them to abandon these settlements along with so many others. Sprach noted that even though the city began to wane after about 800 CE, the remaining inhabitants continued to alter and adapt the buildings to their evolving needs. He called this a reflection of ideological and population changes in times of crisis that finally, by the 10th century, led to the collapse of the Maya's complex socio-political organization and to a drastic demographic decline. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.